History is rife with examples of countries that have successfully separated and developed economically. The USA for instance split from the UK in 1776 and has since grown into one of the world's leading economies. Belgium too separated from the Netherlands in 1830 and has thrived since then. And who can forget Singapore, who split from Malaysia in 1965, allowed it to transform into a global financial hub. One might argue that separation is an avenue for healthy competition for development. Cases in point are Singapore and Malaysia, India and Pakistan, and the triad of Norway, Denmark and Switzerland. Each of these separations has led to a surge in development with each nation striving to outdo the others. In the course of history, several nations have chosen the path of peaceful separation. East Timor for instance, split off from Indonesia in 2002, marking a new chapter in its history. Similarly, Ireland severed ties with the United Kingdom in 1921, leading to the establishment of the Irish Free State. In 1944, Iceland chose to peacefully separate from Denmark, demonstrating that nations could part ways without resorting to violence. This tradition of peaceful separation was also evident in 1905 when Norway and Sweden decided to go their separate ways. One of the most notable examples however is the partition of the British India Dominion into India and Pakistan in 1947. Although plagued by communal violence, the actual process of partition was carried out through peaceful means, highlighting that even in the most challenging circumstances, peaceful separation is possible. These examples underscore the fact that nations can honorably separate from each other, fostering an environment of mutual respect and understanding. But let's not forget separation is not about war. It's about recognizing when a union no longer serves its purpose and making the decision to opt out, just as Ireland did with the United Kingdom in 1921, and as Iceland did with Denmark in 1944 with remarkable ease. It's about giving peace a chance and separating honorably. Countries have also found power in rejecting the names imposed on them by colonizers. Burma became Myanmar, Upper Volta transformed into Burkina Faso, and Gold Coast emerged as Ghana. Each of these nations took control of their identity, and in doing so, set the stage for their own development. So, what does all this mean for Nigeria? It could mean that a peaceful separation is the key to resolving the current ethnicity crisis and spurring economic development. It could mean that a friendly competition between the North, West, and East could lead to significant progress for all. In summary, history shows us that peaceful separation can lead to economic development and resolution of ethnic crises. It shows us that there's nothing wrong with opting out of a union that no longer serves its purpose, and that doing so can in fact, lead to a surge in growth and development. It shows us that taking control of one's identity, as many countries have done by rejecting their colonial names, can be a powerful catalyst for change. This then could be the roadmap for solving the Nigerian ethnicity crisis and spurring economic development. It's a path that requires courage and conviction but one that could lead to a brighter future for all Nigerians. As we continue our exploration, we must understand that this proposition is not just a call for separation, but a comprehensive plan, a clarion call for Nigeria to embark on a transformative journey. The potential benefits of separation and restructuring are vast, and they include fostering lasting peace, regional autonomy, and collective prosperity. This transformative journey is about acknowledging the past, understanding the present, and shaping a better future. It's about recognizing that unity does not necessarily mean uniformity, but can also mean diversity in unity. It's about understanding that separation does not necessarily mean disintegration, but can also mean restructuring for better functionality. As we move forward, it's crucial for Nigeria to consider these possibilities, to weigh the potential benefits against the potential drawbacks, and to make decisions that serve the best interests of its people. This is not just a journey for Nigeria but a journey for every Nigerian, a journey towards a brighter future, a journey towards a new dawn.